Today we have um, a Beis Alevi. Beis Alevi was the, yeah, he was a Levi. His last name was Salavechik. Um, no. Um, he was the Raven Brisk. And uh, he's the father of the famous uh, Reb Chaim Alevi. Um, his name was Yosef Doiv Bear. Okay, and, uh, okay. I think probably one of the most dramatic episodes. If I go around the room, I'd say in, in Chumash, what's one of the most dramatic episodes that are written in the Chumash? Go ahead. What, what do you think? Yosef. Yosef. My father's still alive. My father's still alive, right? Yosef sold down to Mitzrayim. The brothers come to get food. Then they have to bring back Binyamin. And then there's the whole issue with the cop. And Yosef wants to take Binyamin as a prisoner. He's going to hold on to him. And Yehuda is beseeching, going back and forth, back and forth. And then finally, Ani Yosef ha'oid avichai, I am Yosef, is my father still alive? Yeah. And the brothers couldn't respond. They couldn't answer him because they were taken back. They were scared from him. And so right away the, there's some very basic questions. Yosef says, I'm Yosef, ha'oida v'chai. Is my father still alive? Now, what was the whole argument that Yehuda was making that Yosef should not take Binyamin as a slave? What? I need him to bring back to my father. All the conversations between Yosef and his brothers, he was asking about, how's your father doing? Is your father around? All the arguments that Yehuda was making that Binyamin can't stay where he is, he can't stay in Mitzrayim, was is that my father can't, my father wouldn't be able to bear it. He, he already lost one child. He's going to lose another child. It's going to be too much. So when Yosef decides to reveal himself, Ani Yosef, Aida Vichai, is my father still alive? What's this question? So the, the Beis Levi, I'm sure everybody's heard the answer. And the Beis Levi's answer is a very famous, famous answer. But the Beis Levi has a very important message behind this answer. Let's start right away. Number one. So the way this is going to work is put down your notes and then at the back well, there's only two questions. So there are, I broke this down and I pulled out a little bit, but I broke this down into eight segments. So each segment should have notes on it and that will count as one question and then the two questions at the end. So There's a lot what to think about in this Pasuk. Echad, first one, Darei kol divrei Yehuda elav, bevikucha im Yosef, all of the words that Yehuda said to Yosef when he was arguing with him, hayarak shechoshish letzari shel aviv, it's because Yehuda was worried about his father's tsar, his father's too much pain to bear, he's going to lose another child. Ukumay she'omar, like he says, ki ech ele el avi, how am I going to go back up to my father, vanar, yal el aviv, he has to come up to his father, and not only that, but Yosef asked him, how's your father doing? <clears throat> Skip to the bottom line. And, and they came down to Mitzrayim. Yosef asked them, how's your father doing? And, and they responded that he's doing well. Why is Yosef asking this question a second time? The brothers came down. The, Yosef asked about the welfare of Yaakov Avinu. They responded. They told him he's doing okay. The whole argument between Yehuda and Yosef was that it's going to be too hard to bear. Why is Yosef asking again? Why is Yosef saying, I'm Yosef, is my father still alive? What do you have, Zevi? What? I, I think you're... That's interesting. I never thought of that. Wow, that's actually an interesting point. Let, let, let me. Um, Zevi's saying is that now he's. The whole time he was talking about your father, your father. And maybe it's a different type of an ask. What about our father? What about our father? That's an interesting. What do you have? That the first time when he asked, he 
they were so taken aback they couldn't answer so they asked again. No, but they did answer. They did answer. before. Yeah, they, they had answered before. And not only that, but Yehuda's whole argument that Yosef shouldn't hold on to Binyamin was that it's too much to bear. To lose two children is going to be too hard. So basically, he starts by bringing down a very interesting medrash. Let's listen to this medrash. The medrash Rabbi Esau Pasuk Zen, the medrash Rabbi says on this Pasuk, Amar Abakayin Bardala. Abakayin Bardala says, Oy lanam yoyim adin, oy lanam yoyim ateichecha, teichacha. Woe is to us from the day of judgment. Woe is to us from the day of rebuke, or toichacha. I don't know, I just translated it as rebuke. How, how, would, how would anybody translate uh, toichacha? Musr, toichacha. We have toichacha, you know, in the, in the Chumash. Parshas Bahar, Parshas Pukul Kaisai. Woe is to us from the day of judgment. Woe is to us from the day of toichacha. So the Medrash continues. Yosef ketanan shel shvatim. Yosef was the youngest. He was from the smallest of the different brothers of the shvatim. The brothers were not able to respond to him, right? It says, and the Torah continues, and the brothers couldn't respond. And when Hashem comes, eventually, we're going to leave this world, and Hashem's going to come and He's going to be Mechiach, He's going to give everyone according to what He is. So if the brothers were so taken aback by this Toichacha that Yosef gave them, how much more so is it going to be? And Yosef was the youngest of the Shvatim. Yosef is a person, right? How much more so is it going to be La'asul Lavai when we get our Toichach and Hashem is going to be Mechiach Us, Lefi Mashahu, according to what we are? That's what the Medrash says. So Abba Kain Bardala says, Woe is to the day of Din, woe is to the day of Teichacha. It's going to be a hard time. Why? What do we see? Because Yosef, who was the smallest of the Shvatim, said to his brothers, Ani Yosef and they couldn't respond. How much more so is it going to be when Hashem gives us Teichacha? We certainly are going to be totally speechless and we're not going to be able to find our hands and feet. So, basically, he's going to ask a couple questions about this medrash. The kvar divru rabim levayers a medrash v'kavanosei. Many people spoke to explain this medrash. Let's ask some questions. Gam yesh lahavin. Let's understand about this medrash. Mateichacha shahayakan leshvatim. What was the rebuke that the shvatim got? Right. The medrash says, "Woe is to the day of rebuke. Woe is to the day of judgment." Yosef rebuked his brothers, and Yosef was the smallest of the Shvatim. How much worse is it going to be when the Rabbi Nishleilam rebukes us? What rebuke, what teichacha did Yosef give his brothers? What? Didn't he not? Right? Uh, yeah? Maybe. Okay, let's talk about that. that that's exactly where we're going to be going. Oh, okay, fine. So, and, and the first part I would point out is that why is Yosef asking this question, is my father still alive? And number two, we're not done yet. Did, didn't the revelation of Yosef saying, hey, I'm Yosef, that was just, um, maybe he was just saying, I'm Yosef, and maybe the brothers were stunned because it was a big shocker. Where's the rebuke over here? So in the second piece, we're going to have Abba Kain Bardala says, that Yosef was rebuking his brothers, and if that was something that left the brothers speechless, how much worse is it going to be, Lasid Lavoy, when we're rebuked by Hashem? So asks the Beis Alevi, where did Yosef rebuke the brothers? Yosef revealed himself, and the brothers weren't able to answer, not because they were told off, just because they were so stunned and startled, they were speechless. It, it was the last thing that they thought was going to happen. Second question. So first question is, where is the rebuke? Where is the rebuke that Yosef gave? The Medrash is saying, Abba Kain Bardala says, Yosef rebuked his brothers, and Yosef was a small one. Can you imagine how bad and how stunning it's going to be and how startling and how speechless we're going to be when the Rabbi Nishleim rebukes us when we go up to the Elam Ames? 
Next piece. Gam Yeshlov, and let's ask another question. Mashachilik ha medrish lishnaim. The medrish says, Wo, oi liyoy ma din, oi liyoy ma teichacha. So the medrish says, din and teichacha. What was the day of din? And what was the day of Teichacha? What are these two things, Din and Teichacha? And the last question that the Beis Halevi is going to ask, so in section 3, first question is, why does the Medrash separate between Din and Teichacha? And the last question is, the Medrash says that Hashem's going to be Meichiachas Lefi Mashehu. What do those words mean? Lefi Mashehu. Hashem is going to give us Teichacha, Lefi mashahu. Somebody help me out here. Hmm? Uh, yes, according to what we are. He's going to give us teichacha lefi, according, mashahu, what we are. What does that mean? He's going to give us teichacha according to what we are. So that, uh, mostly down the page here. So says the Beis Halevi, explains the Beis Halevi, I, I think it's a, it, it, it's a great shot, and it's got a very, very powerful message. That the Medrash is explaining that Yosef did not say, I am Yosef, as a nice thing. He wasn't saying, hey, I'm Yosef, and I'm happy to see you, and they were stunned. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe. Eventually he will. Eventually he's going to tell them. The next sentence that Yesus is going to tell them afterwards is, don't be nervous that you sold me to Mitzrayim. You thought to do bad to me. Hashem turned it into a good thing. It's going to end up being, but... Maybe his initial thought process, they sent me away in a bad way. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'll prove it. Exactly like what you just said. After they were left speechless, after they were so scared, then Yosef starts saying, hey, we're brothers, and don't worry, I'm not holding a grudge against you. The Rabbi Yishlelem sent me down here for the good. It's going to end up being a very big uh, purpose for me being down here. But the first Pasuk where he says, Ani Yosef v'chai, it wasn't something that was said out of brotherly love. It wasn't something that was said out of... Uh, trying to reconcile things. Rather, what was it? So let's skip to this bottom line here. Kol tan Yosef shel Yehuda, all of Yehuda's claims why Yosef shouldn't hold on to Binyamin, haya mitzarei shel Yaakov. It was because it's going to be too painful for Yaakov. She yigrem lebe l'kichasei es Binyamin. That if, imagine, if Binyamin's going to be taken away from Yaakov, how much pain he's going to be in. Vim kain, if so, harei kasha aleim. So then there's an obvious question. Yehuda, why are you so nervous about Yaakov's tsar? Why are you so sure that he's not going to be able to bear the loss of Binyamin? Isn't that what you did to me? Isn't that what you did to me? Madu'a le'chashashu heim le'tsari shalavim u'machru Yosef. Why didn't you care when you sold me? If the whole reason why you're saying that I can't hold on to Binyamin as a slave is because it's going to be too hard on Yaakov Avinu, well, it's not going to be too hard about ya- on Yaakov Avinu. Yaakov Avinu survived even though I was sold away. <clears throat> so, what? Consistency. Uh, consistency. That, that's, that's an important, uh, we'll get there soon. Consistency. That if your whole taina is, is that Yaakov Avinu is not going to be able to survive, so what about me? What happened when you sold me? All of your tainas are not true. I'm Yosef. I'm Yosef. Is he still alive? So it wasn't a question, is he still alive, that I don't know that he's still alive. What he's saying is, I'm Yosef. Isn't your father still alive? Isn't he still alive? Wasn't he able to bear it? Why didn't you think about this earlier? Turn to the page. V'zeu shesiyim ha-medrash, and this is the conclusion of the medrash, that Hashem is going to come eventually lasad lavai, and He's going to give everybody a teichacha, lefi mashehu, according to what He is. Diktik va'amar. So the Medrash is very particular with the words lefi mashehu, according to what He is. The gambi yoyim hadin also on the day of judgment ia hateichachas luchol echad mi ma'isav al ma'isav. The rebuke that we're going to get, the teichacha that we're going to get, is not that you've done something wrong. 
you've done something wrong, explains the Beis Levi, that will be the din. There's going to be a punishment for the things that we've done wrong. But the nature of a person is, is that when he does something, he has all types of explanations for why he's doing it. He'll give an example about Stockholm. We're going to see a, an example at the end. But the nature of a person is, is that they always have good tirutsim. Why am I doing this? Why well, I have the right to do this? Why am I doing this? Because he did something to me. And we, the person has all types of wonderful, great excuses for all the things that he does. And the teichacha that Hashem is going to give us, Las of Lava, is going to be a teichacha of, it, it, it's going to remove, it's going to melt away, just totally cut away at all of our excuses. You couldn't wake up for chakras? Well, what about the next day when you had somewhere else to go that you did wake up for? You couldn't give tzedakah? Well, what about that silly purchase that you bought the uh, uh, third pair of AirPods? The teichacha lefi mashahu is the Rabbi Nishleim is going to show us all the inaccuracies, all the non-consistencies in what we do. And he's going to show us where all the things and all the terutz and for all the things that we do, they're totally fraudulent. And the biggest teichacha is, is that it's going to be, it's going to be what, it's going to be our own actions are going to testify against us. And that's what happened with Yosef HaTzadik. That's what Beis is saying. Yuda, all the questions that you have, right? When, when, when the brothers came down, Yosef sat them all according to their, uh, to their age. And, and all the various interesting, hard to understand things that happened, that the brothers must have been moving these things around in their mind, that so many strange sequence of events over here. And all the tightness that Yehuda has, why he has to bring Yosef back up. In two words, Ani Yosef, I am Yosef. Everything melted away. Everything was answered. The teichacha that we're going to get, Lassad and Lava, is going to be Lefi Mashahu. The Bani Shalom is just going to go ahead and play back. Really, the reason why you've done this, or the reason why you didn't do that, all the good reasons that we have. Nobody does bad things without a reason. Nobody says, I'm going to be a bad person, therefore I'm going to do it. A person might say, well, I'm in a bad mood, so therefore I'm entitled to do this. Uh, um, uh, this person shouldn't have started up with me. I'm allowed to take this thing from somebody because it's only, you know, it belongs to yeshiva, so therefore it's not a big deal, right? All of these excuses that we have for all the things we do, they're all going to melt away from what? Not that somebody's going to explain it to us. Well, really, it's a bad thing, and really, you shouldn't have done that. The Rabbi Nishlam is just going to show it that he's going to show us the inconsistencies in what we do. And that's the biggest teichacha. Rashi and Chumash explains teichacha as a word. We called it rebuke. But Rashi uh, explains teichacha with the word birur dvarim, clarity. The word teichacha means clarity. Something that's directly right across from you. Neichach means Neichach Pnei Hashem, right across from. But even, even Neichach, even something right across from you. A person go, you ever go to one of those funny houses where they have different types of mirrors? There's a mirror out there that could actually make me look um, thin. So yeah, those are great mirrors, right? But it's not, even, even a mirror that's standing right across from you, right? It can make you tall, it can make you short, it can make you thin, it can make you chubby, right? Even a mirror right across from you, it could distort the truth. Teichacha's birur dvarim. It shows a person the clarity, and the biggest clarity that you have is from what you've done yourself. And it, it, it robs people of all of their excuses. Let's go to number six. V'zeu she'amar b'medrash, and this is that what it says in the medrash, v'yechiach l'chol echod l'fi mashu, that Hashem is going to give everybody teichacha according to them according to who they are, according to them. He's going to replay and show them, well, your excuse for this was this, yeah, but then how come that excuse didn't hold up in another scenario? It's going to be a very, very personal teichacha. It's going to be a very personal teichacha. It's not going to just be that you shouldn't have done it because it was a wrong thing, and this is where it says in the Torah that it's wrong, and we're going to explain to you it's wrong. We're going to rob you of all of your excuses. We will all be robbed of every excuse and every reason and every, every justification that we've had for all the things that we've done. They're going to go away. And that's why the number seven, that's why the Medrash splits it into two things. There's din. Din is the punishment. Person stole something, so there's a punishment for it. 
But the teichacha is, a, a lot of people can endure, we'll talk about it maybe a different part um, later in Parshish B'Shalach. A lot of people could endure a lot of pain. Pain is not the hardest thing to endure. But if a person can't justify himself, if a person can't look in the mirror and say, you know what, I'm suffering, but I'm right. I've done something that maybe some people look at and say that it's bad, but you know what, I'm right and I have my reasons. The teichacha is different than the din. The din is the punishment. You're guilty for doing something. The teichacha is the clarity that you get as to how silly our actions are. And that's why the Medrash splits it from Din and Teichacha, two different things. And then the last piece, number eight, the Beis Levi brings on a, a very, very good example. Let's go to number eight. Rei Menachnu Bechush. We see it very clearly all the time, al Azman. All the Apikarsim, all the people that don't believe in Taira, don't believe in a Rabbeinish Leilam, don't believe in Schar and Einish. Hakfira v'achosha ha'amuna, people that deny the basics of Yiddishkeit, lo'i bolehem machmas roya mizgam. It's not coming because they're bad people. Well, what do they say? Not, I'm not a bad person. I'm a very uh, refined person. I'm a gentleman, right? But rather, kosha lehem laham in davar she'ena masigim b'sichlam. It's very hard for me to uh, uh, understand that there's a b'nish leilam, there's, there's a creator of the world, that, that an original existence that controls the world and punishes and rewards. I can't see him, I can't touch him, can't smell him. It's very hard to, to grasp those concepts. So therefore, Apikarsim go ahead and they say, Chas v'shalom, there isn't. It doesn't exist. And instead, what do they believe? They believe in nothing or they believe, so. I mean, everything came from something. So they'll, they'll read some sort of book uh, on uh, theology or some sort of book on uh, some sort of great theory as to how everything comes to the world and what people are supposed to be doing to this world, it's based on shtusim, and they'll believe that instead. So you're saying is, it's hard for me to believe in a Rabbi Inish, it's hard for me to believe in Schar Einish, so what am I going to choose to believe in? I'll believe in something else. The other thing that you're believing in is a whole lot harder to believe in. You're taking your ability, and everybody does have an ability to believe in something where their seichel, where their, where their intellect ends, People have the ability to still hold on to something that goes past their intellect, and you're choosing to believe in something that has far less credibility to it than an original existence that controls the world and wants us to do good and rewards for it. So Beis Halevi saying that the very amuna that we say, well, it's hard for me to be a maimon in the Rabbi Nishalayim. I can't see him. I, didn't, I, I, I wasn't by Har Sinai. I didn't see the Kriyas Yamsuf. So I can't believe in the Rabbi Nishleim. What am I going to do? I'll go to the Cuyahoga Library. I'll pull out a book. And that's what we're going to work with. Right? A big bang. Right? That, that's what we're going to work with. That also requires a lot of amuna. That requires more amuna. So what's the Rabbi Nishleim going to do, Lassad Lavai? What, you believed in this? You believe that we came from monkeys? You believe that what you do doesn't matter? What was that based on? It was far easier to believe the other way. It just an example. Sometimes you get it with uh, sometimes you get it with Bahram, right? The guy does something maybe that's questionable. Oh no 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 chasashal not 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 believe. But but the, the but this this idea of teichacha, this idea of teichacha. A guy does something that he maybe shouldn't have done. Something silly, right? So his rebbe will call him out on it. And his Rebbe will say, hey, what's with this? Why did this happen? And he'll go ahead and he'll blame it on, uh, well, another Rebbe uh, went ahead and, uh, you know, pushed my buttons or something like that. So then that Rebbe will go over and he'll say, he'll come over to me and say, um, uh, Yishai, what happened over here? So I'm like, well, I don't know. When I spoke to him about it, he told me that it was um, three guys were bugging him, right? So then Rebbe Nussbaum will go speak to those guys and those guys will say, um, no, actually, I heard he went ahead and got into that rut because of you, right? So now we have like three different stories here, right? It's Rabbi Nussbaum's fault, it's my fault, it's uh, Mendel and Zevi's fault, right? Oh. Right? 
It, it, it's everybody's fault, right? It's every, everybody's fault, right? It, you got three different stories. So, so then how, what do you do over here, right? A mansion, and I think we've all been in this place before, a mansion of Rabbi Nussbaum, me, Mendel, and Zevi all get together in a room with the perpetrator. There's nowhere to go now. All of a sudden, there's clarity. It can't be his fault. It can't be Rabbi Nussbaum's fault. It can't be my fault. It can't be your fault, right? We all got together. What, what do we do? We rob the person of their excuse as to why something happened. That's a very, very vulnerable place to be. And that's what the Beis is explaining. The Medrash, Avakayim Bardla, yeah, the punishment that's going to be very bad, it's going to be very severe. But people can endure a punishment as long as they still feel right about themselves. But that clarity that we're going to get, that all the things that we've done wrong and all the excuses that we've had, all the excuses that we've had. You know, th- think about a little kid. He gets angry, so he goes and he breaks his, uh, his brother's Lego uh, tower, right? All the, well, well, of course I could do that because I'm angry. Why? Because I couldn't get, the, I couldn't get a fruit roll-up, right? So if I can't get a fruit roll-up, so that's a good excuse to go break somebody's tower, right? All those silly excuses. It, it, it's basically the same model, and it's the same storyline. It just gets a little more complex as we get older, Right? All those excuses are going to fall away. And that's what the Beis Levi explains. Ani Yosef ha'oida v'chai, I'm Yosef. All of the questions that you have, everything you've been saying, Yehuda, he can't handle it, he could handle it. I'm Yosef, isn't my father still alive? It's a very, very unsettling feeling for a person to be robbed of all of the justifications he has. It's a very, very unsettling feeling. On the contrary, so where do we go from here? It's important to, as we go through life, to try to retain some level of consistency. There's two letters, I didn't, there's two words, I didn't put it in this paper, but there's uh, two words that um, we refer, or the Navi uses, uh, the Taira actually, the Taira, uses to describe a person that's going off on the wrong path. There's Ikesh. Ikesh means a bent path, right? So if somebody with your hand, go ahead, make me a bent motion. What? Okay, bent motion, right? Then the other word is fisaltol, a bit of a tongue twister, just one word. Fisaltol, which means twisted. What's the difference between bent and twisted? Somebody. Yeah, I, I, I'd agree. I agree. That would be twisted, right? It goes to the right, goes to the left, crosses the center once in a while. Bent means it's totally off to the side. You're right, bent is easier to repair. You can get it like that. There's only one kink. You know, it could be it's, uh, it, it's uh, a very severe one, but it's one kink in the, in the wire, right? The salto, <coughs> it's constantly twisted. <coughs> the idea behind twisted is, is that, well, sometimes you're to the right, and you'll go ahead and justify why I went to the right of the truth. And then sometimes you'll go to the left, and you're going to justify why you went to the left of the truth. But the big Musa, the Teichacha that we get is when you're at the left, let me show you what you did when you were at the right. When you were in this direction, let me show you what you did when you went in that direction. It's a much harder thing to fix, because there's not one big kink in the, in, in the wire. There, 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 there's 20 of them. So and each one has to be sorted out. The idea of consistency and trying to keep that conversation honest. I don't know what else Yehuda could have come up with to try to explain why Yosef should let him go. But Yosef in a moment, and the beautiful thing about these things are, about clarity and about teichacha is, it doesn't have to be long-winded like my shir. It's a two-word teichacha and it answers everything. Ani Yosef. It's a two-word teichacha. It answers absolutely everything. All the questions, all the tainas, all the excuses you have, Ani Yosef. Does anybody recall for themselves a moment in life where they've been going somewhere, they've been doing something, they've been coming up with all types of excuses, and a very short second of clarity just goes ahead and knocks the whole thing down. That's what happened with Ani Yosef. That's what happened... That's what's going to happen in Lava. And our job is to try to get a little more consistency.
Our job is to get a little more consistency in life and to keep the conversation honest. Gavaldik.